I want to welcome you to Life Change Web TV. We're excited to be here, and I know that this program is going to touch your heart. It's going to touch your life uh, because God's Word never changes, and God's Word changes our lives. Uh, real quick, just want to mention, want to invite everyone to Life Change Church. It is a great church, 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. You need to be here. If you can at all make it, please come to the prayer meeting at 9. We've been having some tremendous prayer times. It's, oh, it's different every week. It just takes on a different mood, a different movement of the Spirit. And, uh, but all of them have been fantastic. And I believe, I believe God's answering the prayers of His people. He promised that He would. But He will not answer what we don't pray. So please come to prayer meeting. Pray for our church. Pray for whatever's going on in your life. And we'll, we'll see you there. You, you, you want to be a part of that, that time as a church family. Then Sunday nights is the how-to, and uh, I, I don't know uh, exactly. We're getting ready to start, I think, a new how-to series, and I, I, I don't know. Do, do you know what we're do. starting? What is it? How to produce as a Christian, how to be a productive Christian. Okay. Now, it, when this airs, it, we may have already started that, and I don't know the timetables of when this, this is going to air. We're recording it tonight, but at least you know. There'll be three, three, probably three messages on that. Three messages Teachings. On, on how to produce. Yeah, how to be a productive Christian. How to be a productive Christian. Well, I wish everybody would come to that. And uh, What we're talking about is the farmer's mentality. The farmer has to plow, he has to disc, he has to level, he has to plant before he reaps. And so God said your heart is soil, and there's things that have to be done in your heart good. to be really productive. That's good. Well, you're going to want to be a part of that. Please come, because we need... We really need some productive Christians at Life, <laughs> Life Change Church. Now, we have some great people, but we can all, we can all learn to produce. And he did say that we would bear fruit. That's absolutely, if we he abide in say. him. That's right. So, well, let's get into the program tonight. And we've been talking about the will of God and knowing it, discovering it, uh, living it out, walking in it. Now, here's, here's the beauty of, of God's will. Uh, if God has something for us, a want, a desire, He reveals it in His Word, but then He reveals it at the impressions of His Spirit, and there's so many, oh, so many other ways. Oftentimes confirms it through prophetic utterance or, you know, through a faithful Christian or friend or whatever it may be. He'll, he'll, he'll confirm those kind of things. But what I love about our Lord is he does not have a desire for me that he doesn't reveal it and he doesn't send the Holy Spirit to lead me in it. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of the words of Jesus when he said, when he comes, he will guide us yes. into all truth. And that's the truth of his word. That's the truth of his will in my life. That's the truth of the way that I need to live. Amen. He will guide us. Lord, there's an outline right there. I was going to say, you're about and, to uh, preach. I'll I'm about to take off. And, and you know, <laughs> hope you've got an offering with you because I can't preach without an offering. But, uh, <laughs> I want to sing a special. <laughs> well, you know, we, we can't allow that. But, <laughs> but he will guide us into all truth. Yeah. And uh, speak to us a little bit about that, Dr. Chris. By the way, I forgot to introduce our esteemed wonderful Dr. Crooks, but uh, he, he's also here. I want you to know and, I'm uh, really discouraged tonight, and I don't know if I can really do this program because I was expecting you to bring me a pizza from Grandma's, uh, and you didn't do it, I and so I'm, I'm really de I'm depressed, but I'll do the best I can. I'll get you one after if you want one. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I'll be happy to. I'll hold you to it here after I'll I break off this to. diet I'm on. You, you Sounds good. <laughs> Let me just say there's two or three things uh, as points that have been in my heart today because as we go through the day, you and I, uh, having preached thousands of sermons, we're trying to listen to the Holy Spirit. We're, trying, we're also trying to do the things that we need to do. But the first one goes along with what you said. I believe when Jesus said in John 14, 8, and uh, in John 14 and 15, it deals with just what you quoted. Right. But Jesus said to his disciples, he said, now I'm going to go away. He said, it's, in fact, it's expedient for you. It's better for you that I go away. For if I don't go away, then the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, right. won't, won't come. Right. And he said to them, and I love this, Troy, this has blessed me. Uh, I'm 69 years young, but I'm telling you, this has blessed me day after day. He said, I will not leave you orphans. Hmm. I won't leave you orphans. I will come to you. 
Now, so if Jesus comes to us through the power of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, yes. all that Jesus was to his disciples, it makes sense to me that that's what the Holy Spirit is to us. Yeah. Because he said, I will come to you. I won't leave you orphans. I'm going to go away. I'll send the Holy Spirit. And he said, when I come, you're going to know some things. You're going to know that I'm in the Father. You're going to know that you're in me. You're going to know that, that I'm in you. I'm telling you, Troy, when the Holy Spirit comes, and then he said just exactly what you said, I will guide you into all truth. So yeah. that brings me to the second point that's been in my heart today. You know and I know. Gutenberg didn't invent the printing press until the 1400s. Well, what does that mean? That means that for 1,400 years, Christians did not have a Bible. That's true. Now, the certain, uh, certain uh, churches, Ephesus, Philippians, they had uh, manuscripts. But if people wanted to hear that manuscript, they had to get there to listen to the Word of God. Yeah. There was no Bibles like we know them. Hmm. But that does not negate this Bible. What it says is those early Christians learned to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Now, if I were to say to you, Pastor Troy, would you rather search the Scriptures or would you rather have the author of these scriptures come and talk to you personally, if that were possible, I'm talking about Jesus coming to your bedroom at night and saying, I want to say some things to you. Yeah. I know which you and I would choose. We'd say, Jesus, we would rather talk to the author than we would the book that he wrote. Mm -hmm. That just, that's, takes nothing. I am a word man. You are a word man. Absolutely. But here's what we have to do. I read this and it touched my heart. This has been years ago. Uh, an etymologist came to uh, a famous actor and he stayed outside of his house and he was listening to the sounds in the bushes. And when he walked into this man's house, it was Peter Lord, who Peter later became a uh, Christian and a teacher. And uh, Peter was uh, a movie star for a while, but this guy came in and he said, Mr. Lord, he said, I'm an etymologist. There are 18 different kinds of crickets in your bushes. And he said, did you know there's 200 different sounds crickets make, and there's 200 different kinds of crickets? And the Holy Spirit said to Peter Lord, he said, that man is studying hard to hear the voice of crickets. Yeah. And he said, I want you to begin to be like a baby who doesn't understand anything when mom and daddy talk. But, Pastor Troy, after a while, that baby keeps on listening with oh, intensity, yeah. frequency, and after a while, he says, Dada. That's right. That's daddy's voice. That's mommy's voice. That's right. And then they begin to communicate. And it's no sin, Pastor Troy. I remember when I was first a Christian, uh, I wanted to know the will of God, and I wanted to hear the voice of God, but I didn't know what I was hearing. But I will tell you, over the years, the Lord has, nobody gets it perfect. Mm -hmm. We need to be humble about no, this. No, no. But the Lord said, my sheep, they'll hear my voice. they know my voice. And, and that is the key to knowing the will of God. Yeah. 1,400 years, no Bible. But, but the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit made Jesus real. He came to them. And Pastor Troy, if we can teach our people that the Word of God is God's Word, but the voice of God also can lead us in areas where daily life meets the, the road. Absolutely. And we're going to come back and talk some more about this right here and uh, through the Scripture. Now you will see how, how the Holy Spirit would speak to people. And I want to tell you, the Holy Ghost will speak to you. Amen. We'll be back in just a minute. Victory, 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 through Jesus' name we 
We are back talking about the will of God and this program specifically, and maybe for a couple, I don't know how long this will take. Well, it could take as long as we wanted it to, really. But uh, we're talking about the leadership of the Holy Spirit, how he will guide us in all truth, and how the voice of God will speak specifically to us. You know, I've said many times, I, you know, you can search the whole Bible and you'll not find my name in there, but that doesn't lessen the fact that God speaks my name. Right. The Holy Spirit specifically talks to me. Absolutely. And uh, same way with anybody that's, his, that's one of his children, you know, God's going to send the Holy Spirit. Uh, we, I wanted to mention real quick in your first part there, you talked about Jesus said, I'll send another, mm -hmm. uh, as the King James says, comforter, I'll right. send the Holy Spirit uh, who will speak of me. Uh, I think sometimes even the church at large needs to be reminded that the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, as vast, as powerful, as varied as it, as it seemingly is, mm -hmm. it all hubs around one thing, and that's for the Holy Spirit to illuminate Christ in us. Absolutely. To be Jesus to us just as Christ was to the disciples when you said that. Absolutely. And uh, I don't find anywhere where he's really necessarily drawing attention to himself. It's all about being Christ Yeah. for us. And I thought about that when you made that statement. I thought, you know, here, here is Christ for three and a half years leading the disciples. And they, they were enriched and uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. But there was no difference. Jesus was still leading those same men that Absolutely. he physically had led in the same way through the person and power of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And he'll do that same thing for us. Many people, Pastor Troy, say that the book of Acts should be called the, the Acts of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the apostles. Makes sense. Because they were so sensitized. And in Acts 2, they, had, they weren't satisfied. Jesus said, you tarry until you get filled. Because he said, this is me, the Spirit of Christ. Paul says clearly, Pastor, that in Romans chapter 8, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, then you do not belong to Him. So the Holy Spirit comes at the new birth. Yes. He fills us wonderfully as we ask Him to and consecrate our lives. Oh, yeah. But the early church did not even feel like there was true conversion until three things happened. They said, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sin. You'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So they said, we want you to repent. Now, I'm not saying that baptism saves at all. That's not what I'm saying because mm -hmm. the thief on the cross was saved and was certainly not baptized. But the early church said, I want you to repent. I want you to follow Christ in baptism and we expect the Holy Spirit to come on you at that time. And that was a conversion for them. Now, sometimes we know in Acts 8, there's different time schedules. In Acts 9, when Paul was filled, Acts 10, Cornelius' household, Acts 19, when the Ephesians, but once they got filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, I don't find them wrestling anymore to hear the voice of God. And it makes me wonder if we're not having a generation of such shallow Christians that they are, I hear people wrestling, well, what about this with the will of God? And we'll talk in a moment, because it's in my heart about Acts 16, how the Spirit of the Lord wouldn't allow them to go here or here, and then Paul uh, had a vision, but they weren't wrestling to hear God's voice. They heard it. And it bothers me that we don't hear him as clearly as the apostles and the people in the book of Acts. Well, I'll tell you something else that kind of, and I, I'm careful the way I say this because I know that there are some good, godly, wonderful, spirit-filled Christians that do this. And I'm not saying it's wrong to do this. Uh, and I'm not saying God doesn't use it. But it, it, the flip side of the coin I get a little, little bit. Yeah, so so careful. We need this, to hear this. I know. A little bit bothered by Christians talking about, well, I'm going to lay out a fleece before the Lord. Yeah. Now, the only time, only place in the Bible a fleece was ever laid out was by a man that didn't have the Holy Spirit. Exactly. I don't need a fleece. No. To know the will of God. And you do. I don't not... need the thing to be wet in the morning or dry in the morning. Absolutely. I have the the Holy Spirit living in me right now, every day. I don't yeah. need a fleece to know what God wants me to be and do. 
And in Acts 1, when they really rolled dice to say who's the next apostle, yeah. you mm -hmm. don't find that happening after the Holy Ever Spirit again. came. No. And here's another thing, so that people will know that Pastor Troy and I put parameters on this teaching. Because this teaching is like dynamite. It can do you wonderfully good or it can tear your leg off. <laughs> uh, here's the son of Sam years ago in New York City, killed all those people. Mm -hmm. And they said, why did you do that? And he said, well, God said. Well, yeah. that's nonsense yeah. because number one, it's against God's word. Number two, five times in the Bible, the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every fact be established. Right. So that's the purpose of the church is to say, hey, I love you, but you're a little off base here. That's right. Even prophetic utterance in the, the church at Corinth, uh, which was to encourage people and comfort, he said, let a man speak, but let there be uh, people who judge if somebody's going to say the Holy Spirit said, they better have good people around them to say, you're missing it. You're off, of, you're off here. I've been a Christian this long, and I love you, and I want to teach you that this does not uh, correlate with God's Word. Right. So God, in His wonderful beauty, puts boundaries all around this. Absolutely. And here's what I'm concerned about. There are some people who have more faith in a clairvoyant and a 900 number, or whatever numbers you get on to clairvoyant, than the voice of the Holy Spirit. And they look at their astrological chart, and I think that's sinful. Why Absolutely. don't we go to God and say, Absolutely. what are you saying for my life today? Absolutely. I, I think that... Uh, I, I just, the, the fleece thing, I think, I think that, uh, and, and, and again, I'm careful with, with saying this, and, and, but um, I believe in the prophetic. I believe in God, you know, speaking to someone who has that gifting and all the rest of it. I believe in that, and that's, that, that works, but I think that we have maybe overspent that in this day and age where people really have no discipline. They have Absolutely. no real relationship with God. They want to go to some conference and you know, pay their ticket price to get in and have someone prophesy to them to hear what yeah. God has to say. And I, I, I believe God does that. But, but uh, It cheapens Christianity though. It has cheapened. And here's the reason why, Pastor. The Lord has called us to pray. When you pray, enter into your closet, shut your door, Pray to your Father who's in secret. He will reward you open. But He has also promised us 51 times in the New Testament, seven times in chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation, He who has an ear, an inner ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying right. to the churches. And the Holy Spirit, that's the reason Paul said to the Corinthians, he said, uh, you, however you were led, he said, our God, I, I need to, I need to turn to it, so give me just a moment. Here's, he said in 1 Corinthians, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. In other words, uh, couldn't hear, couldn't speak. But he, then he goes on to say, Our God is a speaking God. Yes. But you've got, if you've got the river, you better have the banks. What are That's the it. banks? How about elders in a church? That's right. How about authority around you? Yeah. Those are the banks. I have, I have pastored, and so have you, long enough that there are times where I have heard somebody say, well, the Lord said, the Lord said, or the Holy Spirit, until I just want to throw up. Yeah, they wear it out. They wear it out. And I think we need to be cautious, on the one hand, not to abuse that, but on the other hand, I think we've got to, put more faith in God to be able to speak to us than we put in the devil to deceive us. Well, I've, all, I've often wanted to say to those people, has he said anything to you? Because he sure has a lot to say to me through you. <laughs> yeah. What's he saying to you? Because if, it, if it's a relationship, I'm sure he's got more to say to you about yeah. you than what he does to say to you about me. But uh, it's hard to believe that this program has come to an end already. Well, here we are. But we're going to continue these same thoughts because we're just scratching the surface. I want to have a word of prayer. And here's what I want to pray. I want to pray that God will give you an ear to hear what His Spirit has to say for your life. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank You and I praise You that, that You want, You desire to have a relationship with us. You desire to speak to us and guide our lives into all truth, to, that we know who we're to be, 
what we're to be and when we're to be it. And I pray that each person that's watching this program, Lord, would you, would you give them an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit says? And then would you give them a heart of surrender to obey your will mm -hmm. for their life? We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time right here on Life Change Web TV.